Hey and welcome, this Kira Speaks. We are here for another episode of BMF, season one, episode two, title Rumors. Benz's was the shit back in the 80s. T got his before he was old enough to drive. When, when he got shot, I got my gun and I said, I'm ready for whatever. That's our opening quote for the episode from Meech. And as the episode opens, we see just that. Meech is speeding in his bins and he narrates that everyone in the game knows the risk. Getting locked up, ganked, or smoked is all part of it. But no one thinks about that before you get in. You just think about how sweet the whole thing looks. Excuse me. So growing up, while most kids had aspirations of being, well, uh, Michigan's like top athletes, he and Terry wanted to be like the Chambers brothers who New Jack City was based on and YBI. YBI, they let kids in, which, okay. Um, they had it all, he says, money, women, clothes, and cars. But most of all, they had respect. So Meech crazy behind, he goes to the hospital looking for Terry with a doggone gun. Who would you want to do with a gun in the hospital, Meech? Make it make sense. So Detective Bryant has to come to his rescue because the other guy was like pulling a gun on him because you know, they're gonna protect somebody get shot. But he's like, you know, I know him, whatever. He, so he says he came to see his brother. You know, he says he came to see his brother and Brian's like, you can see him after you hand over the piece. So he complies and Terry does not look so good. But he's alive and Terry says, you know, tell mom, mom and them I'm sorry and look after Terry Jr. for me. And then he kind of like slips away, he passes out. So you can see it in his face. Meech, he wants revenge. The crew shows up and Meech tells them, you know, lock it down, move the stash and get some muscle to protect his family and some goons for the guys on the street. And they tell them they're stretched thin. Old school mama saying, make it work. So, well, who was in the movie? Make it enough. So the family shows up and mom says, I hope this isn't because of you. No, mama, someone tried to rob him. So mom jumps on him. She is trying to whoop the stew out of him. And dad has to, you know, restrain her, pull her off of him. And he's like, she's like, I told you to stay away from him. And if he dies, this is on you. So looking back now, he now, uh, older Meech narrates, he can see how naive he was. You don't play the dope game, it plays you. And he didn't know that yet. So Lamar, you know, he's sitting in his car and he steps to one of the, not one, it's like a group of 12 street boys on the corner. So he asked Jay Mo if he's serious about that job. He's like, nope, we good. He's like, you know, why the change of heart? And he realizes that his days have passed and blah, blah, blah. So his boys wanna, wanna take homie out. They wanna like knock him off. So Jay Mo throws him on pickup. There's a guy slick. He throws him on pickup slick. So Lamar's like, Lamar's like you won't regret it. I don't know if that's a good idea and I ain't been nowhere near the game, but okay, it's whatever. So later, Meech runs up on one of the 12th Street guys and beats his behind with the strap. I mean, just gun button him all upside his head. Dude tells him he didn't, you know, he didn't shoot Terry and Meech takes his chain and he lets him go. And it turns out it was Kwame, who's the jokester from Terry's class. Bet you he won't be making no more jokes. So the family's at the hospital when Terry wakes up and he asks where Meech is at. This is a whole episode. He has him waking up asking where Meech is at. So dad says he's, you know, he's been going all night and they tell him he had surgery and Wanda says they got the bullet out. Dad asks if he remembers anything. And his brother got him caught up in this street mess. And mom says, you know, he needs the rest, but dad, he needs answers, Charles. Charles needs answers. So um, he goes over to the door. Did you know anything? And Nikki's like, she don't know nothing. She starts crying and she walks out. So mom suggests they go home and change and eat. Wanda's like, I got it, go ahead. So they go, she stays. Lamar is talking to Slick, like I said, who is supposed to put him on the thing with him that he knows apparently from back in the day. He used to work for Lamar. He said he had to reinvent himself and work for a man with product. Like, he, like he's like, I tried to hold it down when you were gone, but everything got dried up. You know, had to, you know, he had to get in where he fit in. So as we saw earlier, like I said, he's with the 12 Street Boys now. And the same guy that Jay Mo was, I said this, but I'm gonna repeat it again. The same guy that Jamo, Jay Mo was telling him to help, to um, let Lamar go re-up with him. So Slick wants to know what's the plan. And Lamar tells him that Jay Mo put out the hit on Terry. Put it on the street. Jay Mo put out that hit on Terry. And he tells him to spread the room. Spe he tells him to spread the word. Then we get the title of the episode. Rumors plays in the background. 
time. This Timex Social Club. I think that's what's it. So Lamar and Slick, they're up to no good. Like, they're not. So Older Meech narrates, dope boys gossip more than women at hair salons. And the Hood Network was like a game of telephone back in the day. So now we see Kato and one of the guys from the 50 boys is setting up at the new stash. And, you know, she's like, oh, this is, you know, this is cool. And got this little location or whatever. And she's like, you know, that's smart. So Duel flirts with her, with her a little. And Kato lets him know word on the street is J-Mo put out the hit on T. And he asks where she heard that. And she's like, you know, she's not the only one. He's not the only one that knows how to ear hustle. So just then she was like, because she's looking around. And she's like, I thought you said they don't really, you know, be staying in a, coming to this spot. Cause she notices like some food and some stuff laying around. So just then a crackhead comes in and jumps on her. And he says it's his place. They fight and she was holding product in her hand. So now we got product all over the place. Snowfall. I don't know how they weren't high, whatever. Dude wants her to tell me, but Kato wants to repackage it because he'll have her edit her head. He, she said it was like 60,000 in product. That's crazy. So Lamar goes up to school. He finds Zoe and she asks him why he's there. And he tells her, you know, he's out of the hospital and he's all better and he wants to see her. He gives her a teddy bear and he asks her, he's like, where do you want to go? Like, I'll take you anywhere. You want to go to this place? You want to go to that place? So she's like, I can't go with you. And she walks away. So he's like calling for her and the teacher intercepts and he's like, she says she don't want to. He getting all out of the teacher and he's like, he's so, he sees, he sees Zoe's face and he realizes he needs to cut the BS and he leaves. So Meech gets over to the new stash. He wants to fire Kato. He's like, what are you, bad luck? Like, every time something goes down, here you are. So, dude takes the blame. He's like, he didn't check the back door. He didn't. He was too busy flirting, but he takes the blame. So, the he, you know, Meech is like, the spot's been compromised. So, he's like, we know we can take it to my mom's house till we find someplace else. So, Meech pays off the crackhead, who he's like, can I get some of that? Pays him off and tells him, don't say anything. So, Meech and dude are outside, and they're talking, and talking about the J. Mo rumor, but he suggests, um... But the dude suggests he finds a better way to communicate because he found out what happened with Kwame. Like, you did that junk in public? Like, that's crazy. I mean, Jane always practical sometimes. Usually he's the thinker out of the group, but whatever. So Meech visits T in the hospital and they talk and they joke and he tells T about the J, the J Mo rumor. But T's like, he shakes at the sound of his own footsteps. Like, he didn't do it. So Terry says maybe it was Lamar. He's like, you know, we took we took his corner. Meech, like, we all took his corners. He's like, yeah, T, but you took his baby mom's and his baby's mom's. And Meech is like, Zoe isn't even his. And if he has static over Monique, why not come come see, you know, come see me? That's a good point, but Lamar ain't always practical. And at the same time, Lamar always got an agenda, which we find out. So Terry's like, hell if I know. Um, but he says, you know, you need to leave all this alone and focus on the business. So Meech is, you know, he says he's taking care, taking care of dude. He's taking care of dude that popped up. He's taking care of the dude popped up in his business. I don't know what the hell I was trying to say there. It's whatever. <laughs> uh, basically, the whole gist was he was he. He, he would get back to business. He wanted to take care of the, the, the dude that had shot at his brother. We're just going to go with that because I don't know what it is that I wrote in them notes. So Monique rolls up on Lamar and she's like, have you lost your rabbit ass mind? First you show up at my house unannounced and then you pop at my pop at my daughter's school. And he's and he's, he's like, why, why? This is why I have to slow down when I talk. He's like, why was Zoe so shook when she saw me? And She's like, Zoe doesn't know you're out. And why would you pop up on her at school? And furthermore, you are not the father, Lamar. She has to remind him. So she's like, I just let her call you that when we were together. But y'all ain't blood. Monique lets him know, like, they're not going to be together. They're not going to be a family. So stay your crazy ass away from me and my child. He's like, or what? He's getting all loud, continues getting loud. So Slick has to intercept. He breaks him up. She goes on her way. He's like, dude, I got neighbors. Meanwhile, he was pure comedy in the background. So Big Meech narrates that he didn't want um, a continuous string of killings with him going after J-Mo and then J-Mo coming back for him, taking him out, and then T taking him out, and then J-Mo's kids come for their revenge and take him out and so on and so forth. So he's looking for a solution that didn't end up, that didn't result in bodies piling up. 
So, you know, because Michu's always, like I said, Michu's always a thinker. He's always like trying to figure out. So he rolls up on, on the dude from 12th Street. He rolls up on this dude from 12th Street for Mel. I have to Google it later and see who he was because he's been in other stuff, but I can't remember. So he suggests he get rid of J-Mo and takes over and it's a win for them both. So he's like, the offer won't stand forever when I think it was J-Mo or somebody rolls up. So, you know, Femel pulls out the strap on Meech because he can't look like he was talking to the enemy. So Wanda's at the hospital and she sees Terry talking. She's, she's coming in. Terry's walking down the hallway and she's like, where are you going? He's talking about he's going to see about his brother. She's like, you can't leave. And just then he passes out. So over at the big Coney Island restaurant, Slick is eating while Lamar is pounding some chick out in the dirty bathroom on the floor. Yuck. So when he comes out, Slick's like, you know, I heard that Meech made a play for Femil. Lamar's like, that's smart. You know, he's like, you make a, you know, work work your way from the inside out. And he's like, but Femil is loyal. He's a soldier that pisses blood. Gross. Anyway, so Slick gives Lamar some game on Monique, like you gotta be more gentle and you know, so on and so forth. So like, they're trying to figure out how that's gonna be. He asked the lady for a piece of paper. So meanwhile, the 50 boy crew is standing around gossiping. They got questions. Kato and the dude come up and they try to maintain order because they're basically like, even if, you know, Meech is trying to be practical, but they're like, if the word says that dude did it, whatever, like Meech has gotta act. But anyway, they ain't in charge. So they, you know, they're pushing back to work. So when Meech arrives at the hospital, mom, dad, and Wanda are there, but no Terry. He asks what's going on. And Wanda's like, he got an infection and they're worried that it has moved to his brain. And dad's like, if you cared, you would be here instead of running the streets. They want him here. They don't want him here. Mama was jumping on him. Now dad wants him there. <sighs> and then mom tries to calm him down like he's here now. Like I said, you want him there, you don't want him there. So the family is upset that Meech just got there. Now he's about to leave because he gets a phone call. But I could have swore when he went, stepped into the hall to take the phone call that the person said um, it has something to do with Nicole. So dude shows, up, uh, dude shows up outside the, I cannot remember this guy's name. Dude shows up outside the hospital and tells him what the, what what he did with Femil was weak. So Meech, he says he don't give a F. And dude says, you know, you need you need to dead J-Mo. And Meech is like, you know, you're gun happy. And that's how, you know, good good dudes or, you know, whatever. Catch a bullet, catch a body, catch a whatever. And he tells him he's gun happy. He's not doing anything until he gets the truth. And I respect that. Like, you just go around taking out people. And then be like, oops, my bad. It wasn't you. Now you got to take out the actual person who did it. So the doctor says Terry is out of surgery. He's resting. They cleaned up the infection, but they can't say how well his eye is going to heal right now and the family asks why and dad's like his eye was just fine before the last surgery and he's like did you make a mistake in the surgery and he doesn't want to answer and he's like if he doesn't come out with 2020 vision you're looking at a lawsuit so dad storms off mom charles mom lucille finds him by the nursery um mom is hopeful but dad he's fed up he wants lucille to let me go um, she can't live with that, especially if something happens to him. Terry's already in the hospital. And Charles asks, what if something happens to Nicole or us? How will you live with yourself then? So now Lamar shows up at Monique with letters he wrote in the hospital. He wanted Zoe to know he was, he was trying to get better. He hated himself for abandoning them. And the letters kept him going. Now we all know he wrote them letters the other day. He was in the restaurant, got the paper from the lady. She's like, you trying to make me feel guilty? And he's like, you know, he doesn't want pity. He was out of line, but he apologizes. And then they talk and she asks what he wants. And he wants to work on his relationship with Zoe. Monique, please do not believe the hype. And why is this man so, uh, so pressed to have a relationship with a child that's not his? But I digress. Hopefully that ain't going any further. So Meech picks up Nicole and he scolds her in the car and she doesn't care. He's like, with everything that's going on, you didn't need to be there. This little girl gonna try and jump out the car while it's moving. Kids. So she says she hates him and he pulls over somewhere and they talk. And she says, you know, it's always about you and the family and it's all on drug dealing. It's not fair. You know, it's not fair to her to have to lie to mom and dad about Terry doing it too. With, you know, with Meech, and he says, nobody asked you to do that. I ain't gonna do that to the little girl. 
So she says, you know, she didn't have a choice and you don't, you don't think about how it affects me. And he's like, you don't complain when Terry's buying you clothes or I'm giving you money. And she don't, she says she don't care about none of that. She's tired of being invisible. So they have a little heart to heart. Oh, cause she, before that, she's like, she can't even get mom and dad to remember the field trip and she's not going to be able to go, which is probably what this whole thing was about because you know kids, kids be really self-centered and so sometimes they're being dramatic and it's a small thing. So it probably was the field trip. But anyway, so, you know, they sit down, they have a heart to heart and he's like, you're not invisible to me. You're my baby sister and I love you to death. So he's like, you know, I've been a little too focused on myself, but you know, I'm always going to be here for you and he gives, you know. He gives her a stash and, you know, a little, little band and says, don't tell mom and dad. So they hug and they say, they say they're our love yous. So Terry is awake and he's look again, looking for Meech. Poor Wanda is just, you know, she's just sitting, laying there trying to make sure he's straight. And so now she's pissed off and she's worried for them and their baby. And Terry says, you know, he loves the game. He can't leave it. He's really good at it. Okay, Tommy Egan. Um, Wanda is like, listen to yourself. You just got shot in the head. So he's like this is how I provide and he's not you know he's not gonna stop he says he you know he won't stop going to school either but he wants to give his son a better life than either of them have and she's like I pray you're right again poor Wanda Wanda girl you probably gonna need to leave this man but you're probably not gonna leave this man you know what I'm going to do next week next week when I'm taking some time to watch shows just for me I'm gonna watch me some documentaries on the whole big Meech thing and see if I could see what I could find out Anyway, so Meech meets with dudes and they, they lost the rec center. The 12, the 12 Street boys bought, bought the goons they hired out. So, dude is telling him it's time to make some moves. So, the detective shows up with Jay Mo and he tells Meech to ruffle his, ruffle his feathers, nothing else. So, the detective leave and Meech beats Jay Mo down. I mean, he loves a good pistol whip and a good gun button. So, Jay Mo says it wasn't him. He didn't shoot, he didn't shoot Terry. And... Uh, while they're going back and forth, his homeboy shoot J Mo. Meech is like, you just F me up. And dude's like, I made the right call. He's talking about he gonna let he gonna let Meech take the credit. Basically, you know, streets need a body. He gonna let him take the credit. And we all know he's about to be a problem. And the detective just said, ruffle the feathers, nothing else. That's not gonna come back at all. Okay. So Meech finds mom in the hospital chapel and she's praying. And she says, you know, she was praying for the Lord to enter his heart and for him to leave these streets alone. Mama asked him to promise to stop before he ends up dead or in jail. Her heart can't take that. And he says he is sorry. And he promises to protect the family. She says, if you don't leave the game alone, you know, you get got to get out the house for real. Now, until dad a little while earlier said something, I didn't even know he was back in the house but I digress. So he apologizes and he says, you know, he guesses he's out the house then. And she's sorry that that's his choice. And he says, you know, keep praying for him and she leaves. So Kato, she's getting her dance on when B. Mickey comes in. I've been calling him dude the whole episode for some reason, but I could not remember his name, B. Mickey. So he says, you know, J-Mo ain't a problem no more and they need to worry about Meech. B. Mickey, I, like I just said a few minutes ago, he is going to be a whole problem because he, you know, even though that's been his homie from whatever, he's really going to try to step up and take over because it's not going the way he wants. So, you know, Kato was like, you know, let's just leave him alone. Let him figure it out. You know, he always does type of thing. And she passes him some, some smoke, but she tells him it's never going to happen. And he's like, what? She's like, you know, I know you've been trying to get in these pants from day one. And she basically says that, it, you know, she's the only girl she didn't say girl but i'm not i ain't want to say female she's the only girl in a crew full of guys and getting caught up on one of them is the worst thing she can do and it would mess up whatever respect or credibility credibility that she basically had and so she's like she's not effing him so she's like you know she gotta bounce or whatever so he's like all right i'm gonna watch the stash they at his mama's house anyway so what else you gonna do but watch his ass then she then she gonna say you got any vodka well, grab us some vodka and I'll stay here and keep you company. Girlfriend, what did you just say? But okay, girl. So at the hospital, Meech, you know, he's, yeah, he's teasing Terry about being a hood cyclops. And Terry doesn't find it funny. He's scared. He, and Meech is scared too. And he's like, I don't want to bury my brother over some stuff that, you know, I got you into. And Terry's like, what happened? And Meech is like, oh, he got, you know, he got behind in work. 
he don't tell him about J-Mo. So he's like, you know, I always got your back from the womb to the tomb. They both say it, fist bump, womb to the tomb. So we see a little girl praying. I think it was Zoe, my um, mama, Lucille is praying also. And older Meech narrates about putting, um, Terry told him about something in the science class where if you put the frog in cold water and you increase the heat, like the frog will, the frog is gonna die before he even knows what happened, you know, it's gonna be too late before he knows whatever ha what happened to him. So we see Lamar, he rolls up off the milk. They scuffle, they going back and forth, up and down. One is getting the better, the other we thought he was gonna, you know, Lamar was gonna choke him out. And then all of a sudden he hits him with a bottle. Lamar's hitting with a paint can. I'm getting a little too, whatever, over the scene. So, Mo says, pray for daddy. So it was Zoe. I'm rolling my eyes. So as Lamar, Lamar, like I said, is trying to beat Famille to death, he fights back. And then finally, after, you know, beating him with a paint can, banging him into the, to the dumpster, he dumps him in the, he, he throws him in the dumpster and we end with Lamar walking away while Big Meech narrates, the game is, the game is like that too, referring to the frog. All these warning bells go, go bells go off, but you can't hear them because of the money, the cars, and the fun. You can think you're changing the game, but really it's changing you. And no matter, matter how hard you fight or how many people praying for you, sometimes it just ain't enough and you just never get out the pot. So that's where the episode ends and I'm definitely into this show. More than I thought I was gonna be. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch it, you know, meet you, whatever. But, um. I can't wait for the next episode and I hope you'll come back and join me. But in the meantime, check out some of my other videos before you go. Thank you, thank you. Before you go, share, like, subscribe, drop me a comment in the comment section and I appreciate you. Peace.